Hello, this is Tom from Never Center. In this video, I'm going to show you uh, what's new in Pixelmash 1.2.00, which we've just released and which we're excited about because it's got some great new features. We added a bunch in this release. Um, let me start in by making a new project here and I'll show you what we've got. Uh, so the first um, thing I want to show is these shape drawing tools. And if I hold down long press on that, I can switch between circle and square. And so this is actually a rectangle drawing tool, so you can see I can draw whatever rectangles and I hold shift to um, constrain that to a square. And, um, you know, these were common tools in other pixel art programs, but because of Pixelmash's whole thing is uh, a high resolution um, pixel art editor, we focus first on, on more um, organic tools, but now we're putting in some of these more traditional ones. Um, and so uh, you can see as I move this around, it sort of wiggles a little bit. That's because it's, again, with Pixel Mesh, it's this high-res layer that's being pixelized to this pixelized layer. And if you're not familiar with uh, what I mean by that, then I will show you with the circle tool, and it will be more apparent. So um, I just held down there. And then the circle tool, this only draws circles right now. Uh, it doesn't do ellipses, so it's, it's constrained always to draw a perfect circle. Um, but I'll show you how to make an ellipse out of this. Uh, so I've got a circle here. Um, and if I put this in high-res mode, you can see what I've actually drawn is these high-res shapes, but then it's being pixelized dynamically. And so if I want to make an ellipse, all I do is transform this, and then uh, I can, I've can i got my ellipse. Um, so uh, probably in the future we'll make it so that you can just draw out ellipses with that tool, but so we can do that for now. Um, Another thing that we've added that's a long time requested feature that will be good, particularly for these um, rectangular type shapes, uh, is a sh some more shift to constrain options. So as I'm rotating, if I hold down shift, this will rotate in um, 15 degree increments. So I can get that perfect um, 45 degree rotation or rotate it back to whatever. But um, this will be really helpful with a lot of these uh, tools, if you're drawing things that are more um, non-organic, more with straight edges. We also added that in the, uh, let me draw in a different layer with a different color here, um, with like the paintbrush tool. So um, we've always had where you can um, right click to draw lines. Uh, now if I hold shift as I'm dragging this, it will snap that in 45 and 90 degree. Uh, angles and uh, follow perfect vertical and horizontal and then I can keep right clicking and um, draw out perfect shapes like this. So um, that is the shift constraint tools. Um, now uh, because we put shift on those um, constraints um, that before with some of these tools you would hold down shift to do erase while you were in a regular tool now you hold down alt shift to do that so if I want to erase while I'm in the regular brush tool then I'd hold down alt shift let me undo that and show you a neat thing here which is that um, say I'm in this layer with this uh, rectangle that we've drawn I can come to like the circle tool and hold alt shift and I can erase with a circle um, so it's kind of like doing Boolean operations. It's kind of handy for a lot of things. Um, but anyway, so uh, we've moved that from Shift to Alt-Shift. Um, another thing that we have added is um, in the outline effect, uh, we put in this check mark to make it outline only. So um, now you can see with this square that I've drawn, if I, uh, let me put this other layer underneath it so you can see that I'm actually um, working with transparent shape here. So this is a, a filled square here, but with this effect, when I turn on this outline effect and make it outline only, then it makes it outline only. And a neat thing with this is then I can, you know, scale this and it maintains an exact one pixel width. And so when I do that, and um, uh, it lets me draw lines um, that are, it's basically like vector tools, even though we haven't actually put those in yet. You can do neat things when you, when you have multiple layers um, nested. So let me take this effect off of here, and let me delete this other layer so it's not confusing us. But let me show you something neat here. So say I make 
another layer here and let's put a well, let's put a circle in this layer and this is separate from that rectangle layer but now let me um, parent these under another layer so both of these are inside of this layer we've got the let me label these green circle and we've got the orange square and when I apply this um, effect to this outline effect to the parent layer it will apply it to all the layers contained within and if I turn this on outline only then it will outline only that but now watch I can take this circle that I've drawn and I can move this around and um, it's like a live boolean operation where I'm sort of uh, building I can build up shapes in these outlines with that maintain that perfect one pixel um, width while doing all this cool dynamic stuff with it. Uh, maybe if I duplicate that layer, oops, I duplicated the wrong layer. Um, oh, there we go. Uh, if I duplicate that layer, then I can drag this out and you can see you can build up shapes um, in pretty neat ways using these tools. And of course, uh, let me turn off the grid here and deselect this. As I change the resolution, that still maintains because it's dynamically pixelating it um, it always maintains one pixel at whatever resolution I'm at so uh, you can do some really neat stuff with that um, let me delete these and let's uh, start with a blank layer again here I'll turn the grid back on um, one thing uh, that has been requested a few times is a, a custom dither pattern option so uh, again, let me just paint something here. Let's let's do a new color just for the heck of it. Um, the sky blue. So, whoops, I still got this layer effect on here. So uh, just paint some kind of a blob. Um, now we've got the dither effect, which is a a uh, dynamic pixelating effect, like all of them. So um, as I move this around and rotate it and whatever, it stays dithered with this 25% pattern. We had these drop down with these different uh, dither amounts, but now what we've got is a um, this custom one. And when I just choose custom on this menu, it doesn't do anything yet because I haven't chosen the file. But if I choose custom file um, and I go to this dither pattern that I've previously made, you can see uh, it's it's applying um, a repeating pattern that I just made and saved out to a PNG file. And so you can make whatever custom dither you want. And we also put this check mark in to position it relative. So you know, as I drag this shape around, um, this dither pattern sort of stays pegged in the background as it were. And so if you're doing animation, it can look kind of weird as this moves um, or whatever you're doing. And it will, uh, it doesn't look like the object's moving. It looks like you're sort of shining a light on a background. But if I position it relative, then it keeps that pattern relative to whatever the, the drawn area is. So I can move this around and then the pattern will move with me. And um, again, all of these things, uh, as I toggle between the, the uh, high resolution painting without the effects and the, the pixelized version with the effects, if I make a layer that is at the pixelized resolution using this plus button, then a lot of these things um, are more sort of pixel perfect and accurate. So if I paint something and uh, apply the dither effect and choose custom file to do the same thing, then you can see, whoops, as I position it relative, then it maintains exact pixel perfectness as I move it around. So anyway, it's just a difference between if you want the um, sort of flexibility of painting in high res or if you want the pixel accuracy of painting in low res and you can always combine layers of different resolutions and uh, sort of use whatever is best for each uh, scenario that you're in. Um, now, uh, just a few more things to wrap up um, is that uh, the painting speed on, there are people who are having a slowdown, a significant slowdown on um, high resolution Mac displays and that has been fixed with this update. So that'll be much appreciated. Um, also, just one last thing um, is that when you're dragging in image files, it used to always um, 
be interpreted as you wanting to start a new file. And now, um, if I can get this to work, there we go. Um, now it will prompt you whether you want to import it into your current document or set it as a new document. So if I import this, then it will basically, it's, uh, it has fit this photo that I've imported in into the uh, document here. And then I can do whatever stuff I want, say, um, auto color to uh, automatically detect colors and pixelize it according to that. So uh, those are the updates. That's PixelMesh 1.2. And it's available now wherever you got PixelMesh, whether that be um, from our website, nevercenter.com, or the Mac App Store, or Steam. And we hope that you will love it and let us know what you think. Thanks. Bye.